State lawmakers are once again considering whether to crack down on captive deer hunting. The controversial sport allows people to hunt farm-raised deer in a fenced-in area. Legislators recently tried to pass a bill that would place more restrictions on Indiana's four hunting preserves, but it failed. Now a study committee is looking into whether laws should be changed or if the preserves should be shut down. As Barbara Harrington reports, it's sparking a heated debate between wildlife advocates and the high-grossing, high-fenced hunting industry. Come on. Come on. Come on, Rella. On a sunny afternoon, there's no place Jim Stats would rather be. I got into deer farming about five years ago because of my passion and my care for animals. Taylor made whitetails spans several acres on Bloomington's west side, where Stats keeps more than a dozen doe and three treasured bucks. This is my the original breeder buck for the farm, Zeus. Stats sells his stock to be used for breeding, but many deer farms across the state make a large portion of their money by selling to hunting preserves. But that could change. It'll shut down these family farms. And then in 2000, that was when a legislative USDA study committee that met for the first time this week is exploring whether hunting preserves should face tougher regulations or be shut down altogether. At the center of the controversy is a deadly disease that's spreading rapidly in neighboring states called chronic wasting disease or CWD. It attacks deer and elk nervous systems, causing brain lesions, and scientists haven't discovered a treatment. The biggest problem is there's no live test for it. No way to determine until the animal dies. And by then it's too late. It could have infected many, many other deer. Almond says the Indiana Deer Hunters Association wants to see hunting preserves shut down. They think importing deer from other states to the businesses puts Indiana at higher risk for chronic wasting disease. It's being spread uh, from most likely on trucks. I mean, you don't leapfrog certain states and end up, you know, three states away. We have chronic wasting disease in, in both Penn and, and outside the fence. According to the U.S. Geological Survey's National Wildlife Health Center, wasting disease has been found in both captive and wild deer. When that happens, states try to kill the herd that the infected deer came into contact with to prevent the disease from spreading. But even then, it can have a devastating impact. There's no cure for it. Once you get it into a state, you have it. The uh, animals that are on the soil, they contaminate the soil. That uh, disease vector stays there forever. You can never use that, that soil again. Opponents of high fence hunting say the captive deer industry perpetuates the problem and therefore needs to be shut down or more heavily regulated. But North American Deer Farmer Association Executive Director Sean Schaefer says farmers are spending thousands of dollars to try and keep chronic wasting disease out of the state. Every deer that comes to a hunting preserve is tested, while only a small portion of wild deer are tested. I think as long as the legislature's uh, looked at all the facts and look at the science, because the science does stand behind us on this, and that's why it is such a successful industry across America. As long as they look at the science, I think we'll be okay on this. Uh, I think they'll keep and put uh, good regulations, science-based regulations in place. Whatever the legislature decides likely won't impact Jim's stats. He's giving up his deer farm to move back west. But he's worried about what it could mean for his friends in the business. If they start regulating the deer farmer, as myself, um, this is that is the hunting preserves are our farmer's market. We're losing a lot of revenue in the state of Indiana, not only in revenue in the hunting, but revenue of hunters coming in, the motels, the food. Um, Everything. I mean, it, it's a huge, huge impact on this industry. It's really old for a white-tailed deer. The study committee will meet again before making recommendations to the legislature later this year. Legislators are expected to take the issue up during the 2015 session. For more on this story, and the newest member of our news team, reporter Barbara Harrington, joins us. So, how exactly does the chronic wasting disease make its way into Indiana? Because you just reported in the story that the um, about deer preserves, but so far, at least in Indiana, it's not here and there are deer preserves. Uh, right, so there are so many different ways, Joe, that this could potentially make its way into a state. And what's so tricky about combating this disease is scientists don't exactly know how it gets into a state. They're not sure exactly 
how the disease is transmitted. Now, they do have several different theories. They think that deer-to-deer -deer contact may be the most likely way that deers are catching this disease. But there are also worries about potentially it being transmitted through the soil, hay being carried across state lines, vegetables, and that makes it very scary that they don't know exactly why. And that's why we've seen so many states throughout the country consider banning the import of deer, live deer, going into these deer preserves or these farms. They're also concerned, though, about deer carcasses. If someone were to leave the state, go on a hunting trip, and then bring that back to go to a taxidermist, that could potentially carry the disease. They just don't know. But the disease isn't the sole reason why people don't want the deer uh, uh, gaming farms. That's exactly yeah. right. You know, it's a big reason. It could be a huge threat to the state's deer population. But opponents to this, the Indiana Wildlife Federation and even the Indiana Deer Hunters Association, they think that hunting these animals in these preserves, these fenced-in areas, is unethical. They think it's a bad representation of the sport. They kind of equate it to shooting fish in a barrel. So that's mm -hmm. another reason. Thank you very much, Barbara.